Hey yo, welcome to the QB School Show. Locked in, fired up, ready to roll. You should know the drill if you're here early. Check in, hit me with your favorite emoji. Let me know that I sound all right, that this thing is working good enough, and we are good to go locked in. Now is the time. There's never been a better time. Smash, do whatever you need to do. Like it, appreciate you coming in. Hit me with your questions. Now is the time. Now is the time we are talking ball as much ball as we want here as we get closer and closer to the draft. I swear I thought it was this week. It's not. Uh, but this should be a good one. Fired up. Lots of good stuff. Maybe a little secret special sauce we got uh, thrown into this live. If we get there, we'll see. We got some special appearances here already. I saw my man Croc in the chat, locked in, ready to go. We got some OGs, George, Brian, Maisha. Jaden Scott, good, good. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> All right. Fired up for this thing. This should be good. What do we got videos this week? Uh, we did Justin Fields today. We got a little Trey Lance tomorrow. Probably going to do another Zach Wilson just because I want to take one more peek. But am excited to get closer and closer to the draft. My goodness. Feels like it's been a while. Fired up to see where these guys land, and then we are on to the next. We got some good young quarterbacks in college football, too, that I'm excited to take a peek at this uh, late spring, early summer. So now is the time. We're ready to go. Ooh, Jackson Tinkle, you doing a draft stream? Uh, that's a good idea. I'll probably do a post. Well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, let's float the idea of doing a post draft stream. Uh, definitely probably not going to do it during the draft. My man, we got the UK checking in. Rob back. Appreciate it. All good. 58 of our closest friends hanging out together. Appreciate y'all. Boom. There it is. Maisha in the house. Champs. We, we got to stop this for you, Maisha. But I appreciate the support. Uh, fun to see the fellas celebrate. Uh, had a good time, good little condensed spring season out here in San Diego football-wise for the Patrick Henry Patriots. Fun to be a part of it. Fun to have Omar locked in, ready to go. My goodness. Either way, love it. Oh, no. Almost missed there. hey -o, my man Brian, coming in hot. Oh, man, I was so excited for you until I saw the G. J-E-T-S. Uh, thanks for all the QB review videos. Optimistic Jets fan. Good for you. Who do you think? Uh, it sure feels like it's going to be Zach Wilson for you guys. Uh, I'm, And this is me being as optimistic as I possibly can be. I really think it will be less about who the quarterback is and more about what that new staff can do. If that new staff finds a way to put a successful blueprint in place i think that there's a chance that any of the top three ish four guys probably could be successful there then again if it struggles and it's rough out the gate i think it doesn't matter who it is it's going to be a struggle so hopefully that makes you feel good if you're locked in with that staff uh you should feel pretty good boom carl vaughn my man coming in hot we're staying in the jets world a little bit do you think darnold can be the guy in carolina absolutely uh again Another example of new staff trying to find their quarterback. Uh, we'll see. You know, I don't know that much about the head coach. I, I know everybody's uh, fired up about Joe Brady and what that means. And I think I'm excited to see them kind of move forward with hopefully their guy. I personally am a fan of Sam Darnold. Don't know him at all. Uh, root for him as a Southern California guy. Hopefully, obviously needed a new start. But we'll see how much of it was the system, how much of it was the gaze impact, the gaze over, and how much of it was Sam Darnold. I probably think there was a little bit of both, but an opportunity for a fresh start, an organization that sure seems like it's trending up, uh, a division that besides for Tom Brady is probably trending down, and uh, an opportunity there for the Carolina Panthers to kind of uh, catch lightning in a bottle, and uh, we'll see what happens. I like it, though. I appreciate the support. <laughs> Man, we got DLM trying to get some truth about Davis Mills. I mean, 
I think I did a week of videos on them. You take your pick about what you think you see in the video. I see, I think I probably see uh, a prospect that is obviously, is not obviously, is not at the top tier of this draft. doesn't mean that he can't be a strong, solid, even beyond that NFL starter. We're just looking on this channel just at what the film says. And the film says that he's a, you know, mid-tier guy, which is not a big knock. Like, I wasn't a mid-tier guy. I wasn't anywhere close to a second, third round pick. So, second, third, fourth round pick. And so, those types of things, we'll see it. Obviously, so much of it is luck. Falls on what organization he goes to, what their kind of situation is at the quarterback position, when he gets an opportunity to play, what's the surrounding cast look like, all those things for all these guys. That's why it's such a crapshoot no matter what anybody says. Boom, boom. Oh, Matt. Matt, I'm going to butcher your last name. I apologize. Matt Ruggiero. Might be close. Thoughts on Alex Smith's retirement? I know you were teammates in... Ellipses, I think, OB, I don't know what that means. Uh, we were uh, teammates in San Francisco, been a massive fan of Alex Smith. Uh, before I knew him, after I knew him, thought he was class act, fought through some injuries, even when we were together for a short stint, uh, did everything the right way, is a much better athlete than I think people realize. I always thought he was almost like, uh, gazelle-ish. We used to do a bunch of like speed testing, cardio testing. He was always getting first. I mean, he is a freak of an athlete and uh, fun to see him get an opportunity to have the kind of comeback story that he had. Obviously horrific. I never even watched the special. Uh, I don't do well with those things. But I know the story. Uh, I know the impact on football he's had down here in San Diego. He went to one of the more prominent high schools down here in San Diego at Helix. And uh, you know, his fingerprints are all over the place for high school football down here. Uh, he was a class teammate, had a class act uh, just about everywhere he went. He made an impact. So um, kind of cool that he gets a chance to go out on his own, which is very rare in that league uh, to make it your choice. And so uh, wish him the best on whatever's next. Ethan thinks that this is O-line school. Come on. Bruh. Ha-ha. <laughs> Oh, I saw it. Did I see an AG comment in there somewhere? <laughs> Kwame, you played for Adam Gaze. Was the uh or was it bruh? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, Adam is a good dude. Uh, you guys know that I'm not going to say any knock Adam by any means. I knew him back when he was uh, still trying to be on the up as far as getting in the quarterback room, coaching the quarterbacks, being part of that staff in Detroit with Mike Martz, and then he went with him to San Francisco. Uh, I'm a big fan of Adam. Hopefully he gets an opportunity to kind of, I don't know, about find his way or whatever. There's so many like redemption stories in the league. Uh, I think he's got an opportunity. He's a young enough guy. Go, uh, you know, hole up for a little bit, come back better, and uh, we'll see. You know, there's always, everybody loves a good comeback story. Oh, speaking of that, who watched the series this weekend? Yeah, Tati is back. Didn't quite go our way, but I'm telling you, it's coming out here. Slam Diego. We got some Finns fans in the house. We got a lot of new names, to be honest with you. I appreciate y'all hanging out, showing up. Eric Snyder, I see ya. Brian. Uh, oh, I see you, Brian. Of all the mid-round quarterbacks you've analyzed, who is your favorite to watch? Not necessarily the best, but your personal favorite tape to watch. Ooh, that's a good question. Uh... If I have a favorite, I mean, this guy doesn't really fall into the mid round, but I personally like Kellen Mond. Uh, he, he probably falls into the top, damn near the top tier, not right that top tier, but like right below it. Probably not exactly the guy you're looking at. Uh, I will tell you the one that probably surprised me the most. And I haven't done quite as many mid tier guys just because it's been difficult to get the film. Very difficult. Uh, I've been disappointed for a handful of guys, but different story. I probably watched more of the top tier guys than I did last year. 
But I think the guy that made the biggest jump for me from what I remember watching the 2019 film to what I saw on the 2020 film was Ian Book. Uh, I'll be honest, I was not a huge Ian Book fan. Not that I'm a huge Ian Book fan anyway. But I thought his 2019 film was uh, borderline unsettling on a certain, for some throws. And I didn't watch every single throw. But the stuff that I have seen from this past season, whether they were asking him to do slightly different things where he was surrounded by potentially better talent, uh, certainly up front, they were really good. Some nice tight end position stuff. Certainly no burners on the perimeter or as a collective unit. But I thought he played way better than I remember. And I don't. I could probably go back and look if I cared that much, but I don't. So he's a guy that I kind of root for just because he's a Sacramento guy, a uh, little undersized. Feels like he's played a lot of football, but uh, it'll be interesting to see if he can catch on somewhere. Maybe, you know, be a backup for a little while and then make a splash when he gets an opportunity to play. That hurts my soul to say that about a Notre Dame guy, but hey, oh George, oh man, can you make a video on Akio Glass from Alabama A and M, one double A quarterback who could get picked? I would love to do that. If you send me the All-22 or anybody watching this wants to share the All-22, I do not have Alabama a and I don't know anything about that cat. But I love. I would love to watch some people that I don't know, never heard of, uh, especially as we get closer and closer to the draft. So if there are guys that are scrambling up draft boards somewhere that you've never seen before and you have access to the film, let's chat. <laughs> Eric, three deep safeties, I feel like, are the new the new cool thing, the new over-under. Uh, I don't have a great answer for you. I think that there are some uh, deception things that can three deep safeties can do. I think it jacks a little bit with uh, some RPO reads if you're reading the box because who knows who's the forced player. But I don't necessarily think it matters for down and distance. I think if you go all in with three safeties, uh, you've got to have the depth to be able to fill all those positions. But I do think it causes some issues on how certain offenses construct some of their reads or RPO things. But boom, my man Alex. Appreciate you, sir. Off topic. Do you still recommend the Peloton? <laughs> that is off topic. I think you recommended it once. I don't know anyone with one. It seems great. Work from home. Yes, I still recommend the Peloton. I probably, I was crushing souls on the Peloton in the fall. I probably went from when I was close to doing maybe, definitely did 30 days, maybe did 60 days in a row. Uh, definitely nowhere near that now. I'm I'm probably three to four times a week. Uh, got my favorite instructors and uh, I, I personally really enjoy it. My, I should preface this by saying that my wife bought it. I made a significant amount of fun of her for buying it. Uh, always kind of made fun about for people in spin class, keep jumping on a bike, not going anywhere. Uh, we live in a very nice area where you can easily ride a bike. I rode my bike today multiple times. Uh, so to hop on a stationary bike in a room seems silly to me, but I tell you what the instructors for me, what makes it is that it's easy. I can like jump on it as opposed to driving to the gym driving back, waiting for a thing. Like, it's just easier. It's just easy. The other part of it is the instructors are unbelievable. They are legitimate entertainers. The Alex and Cody are my favorite to do it, and they're just hilarious. So, yes, still recommend it. Sorry, that was off topic. I apologize if you're not a Peloton. But it's a lifestyle to a certain degree. Oh man, Connor, I'm a big fan of YouTube. Not looking, we're not looking to branch out to that uh, to that sector. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, what else we got here? Oh, my man, we got a little little le <laughs> living legend in the house, Long John Silver. Boom, the man, the myth. My goodness, just crushing it on so many souls. Brad. Brad. Oh man, Eagle Boy 2030, JT, is there a future in a front office or coaching staff for you? Uh, the future is now, right now, for the coaching thing. 
uh, I'm just coming out of it actually today it was the first day we didn't have practice it felt really nice to sleep in not have to worry about uh, a script or a practice plan or water or anything like that opening a restroom so we're pausing we're taking a pause for a little bit on the coaching thing uh, the front office thing I doubt it I mean guys when I'm, I'm in San Diego I'm not moving it doesn't feel like the league's coming back to San Diego and even if it did it's not for me I have fun with this space and uh, it's just enough football for me so I appreciate the uh, people nudging me in that direction but it's a uh, hard Capella my man ba boom nice PFF collab by the way Shane Sam Shane Bouchel I I feel like I don't say the last name correctly is it Bouchelli or Sam Ellinger uh, this is like a Texas conversation huh uh, I, I probably would go Sam uh, I think he's probably a better athlete I don't think the, the little that I watched of the SMU guy, it was not good. Now, it might have been just because it was they were playing Cincinnati. But I've heard good things. Another guy, uh, he actually I watched in the past and I actually thought I have 2019 SMU stuff and I thought it was pretty good. I just haven't seen enough of him. So I feel like I'm doing you know, like a disservice by saying Sam Ellinger or straight out. That's just because I've seen more of him. So I feel like it's like a recency bias. It would be hard for me to tell the difference. I, I lean Sam. Boom. My man, Tom Mullins in the house. We're coming in hot with the Super Chats today. I appreciate the support. My goodness. we got 130 of our closest friends here. If you were stuck on an island, Jimmy Buffett or Allison Chains, steak or fish, soccer or baseball? Well, let's go back to front there. Stuck on an island? I love baseball, but it's hard to play baseball by yourself. It's an excellent. Good questions here, Tom. I do sincerely appreciate the support, and that's a significant super chat. So thank you again. Uh, I'm going to go baseball, steak or fish. For a long time, I would have said steak. Right now, I'm probably going to lean fish. I would say fish, especially like on an island. You probably get some pretty fresh fish. Steak would be tough to come by. I don't want to, you know, do the whole process myself. Jimmy Buffett or Alice in Chains. Again, because you're island, you know, I'm going to take the contextual element of this and go Jimmy Buffett. So Jimmy Buffett, fish, baseball, you're welcome. Thank you. Man, I love it. Brian. <laughs> this is such a good question. That's pretty funny. Best and worst all 22 cams in the NFL. Really, there's only one answer. And anybody who says something different other than Soldier Stadium for the worst just has not watched football. Best? I don't know if there is a best. I can't think of anyone that I like better than another. The sideline Soldier Field, though, is a disaster. It is like watching JV football. I cannot handle it. I don't understand it. Uh, there should be some sort of like amendment to make them switch the location of that. For the love of God, please change that if you're a Bears organization. But that's outstanding. Let me know who you think is the best. I've never thought about the best. I, I really don't think of, I, I can't think of one that is slightly better than the other. It's just everyone and then the Bears. <laughs> That's great. Love it. We got some good questions today, y'all. You guys are significantly raising the game here. Cheers, Cheers to that. Oh, man. That was funny. Call me. JT, I'm going to send you a coaster your way for that sweet table. What's your style? This is another great question. My style is no coasters. Don't, I don't, like, I don't know what kind of tables y'all are rocking at your fancy crib, but we have no coaster zones. This is no coaster zone. This table is not that nice. We, if, if there's a ring from a mark, and I don't know, have you ever seen a ring from a mark? Like maybe from like a hot mark? If like you put your coffee like on the face of the sun and then you set it down, but this Yeti thing is made to order. If I could just get Yeti to like want to sponsor the show, it'd be even better. Then I'd really have like a Yeti extravaganza here. But no coaster zone. It's it's freeing. Try it. In fact, if you're anti no coasters, say you I grew up with coasters in the house, 
My wife was a no coaster. We go, you go no coaster. It takes a little bit of time. I remember feeling the tension, like in my shoulders, like I need a coaster. You don't. It's not that nice. We do not have anything that nice. And if you have stuff that that's that is that nice, go buy something that isn't that nice and try it out as a no coaster end table. You will appreciate it, and you will say, "Damn, he was right." Boom. Bruh. I'm on point with that one. My man, Nick Scott, checking in. What's good, sir? Boom. Everybody, do me a favor. Smash that like thing. We can keep this thing going. Do have fun with the lives. Uh, I'll tell you right now that next week's live will not be Monday night. Uh, not sure when it will be. Let's just call it. Well, it'll probably be before the draft, and then we'll pro probably do one after the draft. So be flexible next week. Have that corona adaptability that we'd love to talk about. <laughs> Boom. George Smith. Why do Division two and three quarterbacks very, very rarely get drafted or have opportunities in the NFL? I think there are good QBs there. Uh, I agree that there are good QBs there. The reason they don't get drafted is because they're not very good QBs, unfortunately. Uh, take it from one that was uh, for a long time. I was not. And there's a massive difference, I think. Not, not a matter. There are good quarterbacks there. They're usually there for one reason or another. For me personally, I just wasn't good enough as a high school player to earn an opportunity at a higher level of football. My Division II program, I think, made me, helped make me into a potential NFL player. Uh, really special spot. There are spots like that. There are some transferable guys. I think a guy who could and should be in the league, if you guys uh, are into your quarterback depth uh, knowledge, is a guy named Luis Perez. I think he won the Heisman at the Division II level, the Harlan Hill. Uh, he's been bouncing around camps. He's a guy who, depending on the right situation, could certainly stick somewhere. But again, he's kind of a weird story, like didn't play football when he was younger. Went to junior college, community college, bounced around, you know, trying to find a spot in the league, different leagues. And so it takes a little bit of luck. And I was certainly very lucky. But it's just because uh, there are just so many good quarterbacks at higher levels that play against higher level competition. I will say if you are a lower level quarterback, uh, kind of like FCS to a certain degree, although FCS is pretty good football, uh, you really have to pop off the film to even get an opportunity. And then even there, you know, there's usually a re again, it's hard to say this coming from someone who played at that level. There's a reason you're at that level. And so once you come to grips with that, you can attack it and try to get an opportunity potentially, but it's a tough, long road. My man, Rick Thomas. Boom. Appreciate the support. Becoming a member. If you're wondering, the people who have those logos, they are members of the quarterback school. The longer you're a member, the color of the logo changes. We might be getting really close to like, I think the last one that I haven't seen anybody have is the gold. So I think that means after a year, maybe I got to go look, but I sincerely appreciate the support. It's an easy way for me to recognize your name, to see you in the chat, to support the channel. I sincerely appreciate the support. So thank you very much for that. Usually get a little bit better with uh, being able to pick up your questions too in these chats. Oh man, DJ review. I'm going to have to learn to say that last name, aren't I? Uh, we're definitely going to get one of those uh, over the summer. I think I have the Notre Dame game. I don't know who Tyler Show is. Again, I apologize. I know this is hard to uh, get sometimes, but I do not know every single quarterback in college football. My man, Tom Mullins, you're coming in hot, sir. I certainly appreciate the support. Let's see what you got this time. Pink one is one year. Nick, you're welcome. Maybe year two is the gold one then, because I don't remember seeing the gold one yet. Oh, man, Tom. Ryan Leaf or Jamarcus Russell? Jones or Fields? That's an easy one, Fields. Ray Lewis or Lawrence Taylor? I'm going to go Lawrence Taylor on the last one. Again, we'll go back to front. Uh, played against Ray Lewis. Nothing against Ray Lewis, but when I played against him, he probably wasn't his absolute peak, so I think that that has a bias in there for me. You know, I almost think like Ed Reed was probably the dominant guy on that defense when I was playing against it with the Bengals. I thought Ray 
and then I, you know, I'm not just, I'm the other part of it is, and this is obviously got a lot of respect for guys who play at that level for that long. I'm just not that much of a rah rah guy like that dance thing. Uh, I thought it was cool when I was young, and then I couldn't imagine someone doing that all the time when you're in the locker room. Now, I get it, there, there is an element of like WWE uh, personality that comes out of it, especially in those moments, but for me, tough. Uh, so Lawrence Taylor, for sure. Uh, Justin Fields, for me, it's not even close. Uh, that's not true. Uh, I think it's cool that Mac Jones had such a great senior year. I really do. I don't understand how people think that there's a connection as far as the potential for prospect-wise between Mac Jones and Justin Fields. That's just me. And then Ryan Leaf or Jamarcus Russell. I will say Ryan Leaf's, I don't know if it's like his publicist or maybe just the recency of it, but it sure feels like he has like, turn the corner as far as his public persona I feel like I see him on shows he seems well spoken uh, seems like he's got his life together I don't know Ryan Leaf at all Jamarcus Russell I know the smallest amount he was like 14 <laughs> he was a definitely a young teenager when I was an elite 11 counselor for like elite 11 2 it wasn't the first one I'm pretty sure it was elite 11 2 he was like 14, and I remember him dunking uh, in this basketball court in Laguna Creek and me being like, who the hell is that 14-year-old? Because <laughs> I wasn't close to dunking, and it was uh, it was him. And so ever since then, I've been a fan. Obviously, uh, didn't quite go his way in the league, but I'd probably say Jamarcus. My man, you guys are being too generous with the Super Chats. I sincerely appreciate it. My goodness. Russell Matthews coming in hot. Ooh, Rick Thomas, remind me, and I will talk about the hybrid drop. Okay, remind me, I'll talk about the hybrid drop. I teach it a lot. Russell Matthews, Justin Fields, has had a different foot forward on his pro day than he normally had following during the 2020 season. Why do some quarterbacks start with their left foot forward as opposed to some quarterbacks that have their right foot forward? Uh, Russell, that is a good question. I might have a video on what foot forward uh, stance-wise. For me... Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's not true. It, it really doesn't matter. I think what matters is if you're in a system that wants you to be right foot forward or left foot forward, and there is a reason, usually tethered to the precision of the drops or the footwork, and the quarterback coach or the head coach wants you in that footwork, then you need to do that. Now, for me, the way that we teach it, <laughs> the way that we teach it, uh, at the high school level, I like a, a straight stance, an even stance, because we do a lot of RPOs right in front of our face. Uh, I think that there are benefits to being right foot forward or left foot forward. I personally always preferred left foot forward just because I felt like I could catch and throw left easier or hot easier to the left like that. But I went back and forth. Uh, I think I've heard whispers that Shanahan is very uh, insistent on one way or the other. I don't know which foot it is, but it was probably just to show that he could do it. I really don't think it's a, a big issue at all. Uh, maybe for guys that have done it one way for like 10 years in the league, if you shift, if you change it, it would be an issue, but I really don't think so. It's not like a batting stance for me or like a free throw procedure. It's not. It's something that the most important thing is the back of the drop when you're actually ready to throw it, uh, in my opinion. So how you get there really doesn't matter. Let me know if you think differently or if anybody else has different experience with it. But boom, my man Tom coming in hot. I tell you what, uh, I'm probably late to the Bitcoin game, but I'm definitely going to go there. By no means an expert on this. Do not take my advice on this, <laughs> but I would lean Bitcoin. Man, Brian. All right, Rick, let's do it right now, actually. Hybrid drop. Uh, Heart, my goodness, what's going on, fellas? You guys going nuts today. I sincerely appreciate the support. It's very cool. Uh, appreciate the support, Tom, Hart, all. Uh, I enjoy the channel. I enjoy doing these live streams, so thanks so much for checking in, hitting the like if you haven't, if you're just cruising in the background. Again, I appreciate it. Coming in hot tonight, Brian. You're right, bro. It's on fire in here. Gonna have to start doing more lives. 
uh, it's a draft season. What was I going to talk about, Rick? Oh, the hybrid drop. So the hybrid drop is something that's what I call it. Like, don't go to like a quarterback camp or quarterback like guru out there and be like, you know, I'm supposed to do a hybrid drop. I'd never heard anybody else say that. That's just my term for it. So to me, it's a little bit more, it's a tweener. So it's not a one step and it's not a, a three step. It's kind of like a shuffle, but within that shuffle for a lot of our plays that we use at the high school level and even plays that I use at the league, there will be examples of, okay, if, in shotgun, if you, if you want to work to the left versus whatever, for example, zone, work to the left, man, work to the right. Well, it's quick game to the left and it's kind of drop back to the right kind of mid five step drop back game well that's different drops right one step to the left three step to the right for me i classify that as hybrid drops some people call them shuffles some people just call it the play i like to be really specific with the footwork even at the high school level so if it's a hybrid that usually means if you're going to work one thing it will be one drop if you're going to work another thing it's going to be a different drop so i don't want you taking three steps to throw a hitch but if you do take, if you want to work the comeback on the other side, I want you to take three steps, not take one step because then you'll be early. So that's for me. And then the footwork of it, sometimes you catch where you're not quite sure what it is. Like, oh, I got tricked. It almost turns into like a shuffle. So it's like a one step and a shuffle. And for me, I used to use that as a pro and I actually went multiple teams. I would do this and say, hey, I want to use a shuffle footwork as opposed to gun three, no hitch. So gun three no hitch to me is hard as hell any any no hitch is hard as hell so under center five no hitch three no hitch even seven no hitch for some crazy throws back in the day those are hard throws like why would you do that you control the back of your drop so if i could time it up so that i could get a hitch or a reset that makes it easier my momentum my energy is going towards the target so for me i used to do the shuffle so you catch it and like shuffle hitch throw that times up the same for me as three no hitch so if we're throwing a speed out to the field, a 12, 10 to 12 yard speed out to the field, to the wide side, and you're in gun, a lot of people will take three no hitch in gun. Well, I would take a shuffle, shuffle hitch. So shuffle hitch is the same timing precision as the three no hitch, but now I'm throwing with a hitch. You're welcome. <laughs> Revolutionary. And then I call that hybrid. So I don't know if anybody else on the planet does that. I know a lot of people do the shuffle footwork. I'm not an air raid guy. I see a lot in the air raid world. You'd have to ask them exactly what it is, but that's just my take. But boom, Richard, we're keeping the tradition going. Hot. Richard, do you see Kellen Mon as being a possible upgrade over Drew Locke? Yes. They seem similar as far as tools go. Really? Okay, let me think about that. But I think Mond might already be better than Locke as far as processing defenses. Yeah, I don't know anything about processing for them. Uh, don't get it twisted like when people start talking about processing. A lot of that to me is very difficult to judge from film. Now, if you're talking to the guy and like in the room with Locke and Mond, uh, you'd probably be able to tell pretty quickly who's in front of who as far as that processing element of it. But for me, I would be just guessing. Uh, I I kind of like Kellen Mond better right now. I think he's got a little bit more of what I would look for in the position. I like the trajectory of his improvement uh, from what Drew Locke has shown on Sundays already. You know, I think that there's a significant gap between what I would consider precision footwork and what he's doing and has done. Uh, I think he actually regressed a little bit. And so to me, I would be excited if Kellen Mond uh, ended up with the Broncos. Again, I don't know if that's a great situation for any quarterback right now so that also goes into play but you know six one half dozen to the other you probably ask another six people they say something totally different so uh we'll see what the broncos end up doing at that position it sure feels like the struggle is real there at that position for a, a long time ever since peyton's exit and so we'll see richard sienna kellen mon similar to marcus mariota a little like a little bit i think marcus mariota is a great athlete was a great college quarterback i think kellen mon was a very good college quarterback i think that they have a little bit of the same like body movements like fluidness or stiff rigidness i think marcus mariota is a very good quarterback like just because he's not playing right now doesn't mean that he's not a good quarterback and so 
I don't think that that's a terrible comparison. I don't love the comparison game, but I, I think Kellen Mond, if he, I would, I would personally think it would be fun to coach a guy like that because he, to me, has someone. If you could smooth out some of the mechanics, meaning to me, just the rigidness of it, makes him a little bit uh, less consistent throwing the ball as far as the accuracy, the ball control, than he could be. Uh, I think he would be a fun guy to if he went to the right system with the right coach in the right environment to really thrive really quickly. My man, Scott. See, Scott knows all about the shuffle. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Nothing like the 08 championship. High school. Balling. Oh, man. Cam Bessie. JT, where can I get some Patrick Henry high school swag? The Green Patriot pullover was strong. Uh, we have, do have some strong gear. I'm not going to lie. Our black Jordan uniforms, strong. Strong, strong to quite strong. Fun to see them uh, enjoy wearing them, too. Uh, I'll put the next, uh, how about this for the swag? I'll put the next team store when we do one uh, over the summer available. I'll share the link so that everybody can take a peek at it. If you like that green Pat swag, probably rub a lot of people the wrong way, but excellent for St. Patrick's Day if you're a Patriots fan. So Lua, uh, I do not have an NFL team that I root for. Sorry. M.A. Green, you're late to the Darnold party. Apologize. You're going to have to go back and watch the beginning of the... Michael Lyon. Mariota should be a head of car. Much more dynamic athlete. I don't know about much more. I think Carr is a pretty good athlete. I know Carr has like a bad rap with Raider fans. Uh, I don't pretend to know the answer to that. And I think that there are pretty similar as far as like where they fall as far as, in my opinion, like quality of play and what they've shown. I think Carr has played better than Marcus Mariota and obviously deserves to keep playing in my opinion, but I think he's an outstanding backup in the NFL. <laughs> have you seen Kyle McCord of Ohio State? I have not. I, I know that there were a bunch of spring games this uh, past weekend. I watched not one snap of them. I kept, kept coming up on my ticker, though. Boom. Man, I uh, appreciate all the new names coming in. I love the fact that you y'all trying to get uh, engaged in the comments. Fun stuff with this stuff. Again, over 150 of our closest friends hanging out together. Uh, quick little bit of housekeeping. If you haven't, please sign up for the Quick Game course. Uh, the link is in the description, probably to this stream because I haven't changed it. Uh, got that coming. Working on a few new courses also. Tis the season nowadays. So excited to share those soonish. Uh, we'll see what that looks like. Again, uh, if you're looking for even more content, the long form stuff, really what it's like to be in an NFL quarterback meeting room, hop over to the Patreon community as well. You can find those links all over the place in every video. So appreciate it. More wins in Indy expectations. Uh, expectations are high, in my opinion, for Indy. I'm excited to watch Carson Wentz. Again, a lot of guys feel like, like there might be some resets of careers for guys who I think are pretty good quarterbacks that in the right situation, uh, Frank Wright, uh, Marcus Brady, a uh, guy I played college ball against, actually ran into his dad a couple weeks ago, uh, is in the high school game down here in San Diego. Uh, he's the OC in Indianapolis wouldn't be surprised if Marcus Brady isn't on kind of the uh, fast track for hiring here pretty quickly if Carson Wentz goes out and blows it out of the water in Indianapolis. So that's another name to pay attention to. Uh, I'm pretty excited to see what happens in Indy. I'm a big fan of Frank Wright on a number of levels. Have been from a distance. I don't know him at all. I've always heard really good things about him. Just remember that Buffalo Bills game, man. I had this sweet starter jacket. Parka. I needed that win especially because my buddy had an Oilers one. <sighs> Got it for Christmas. Christmas break. Down like a bunch. Comeback win. I think it was like 70 degrees. I wore that parka. <laughs> Ooh, Matthew Feller. Uh, we doing quarterback ranking soon, or is that going to be Patreon? That might be just Patreon. That's a great idea. No, I wouldn't do that to you, everybody. Uh, there will be some variation of a ranking video at some point before the draft, 
I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. <laughs> Michael, I appreciate the strong words. Thanks for the support uh, across multiple mediums. It means a lot to me. I'm glad, I'm assuming we have so many people in here because they're enjoying, and the fact that the draft is coming up hot here and you enjoy the uh, all the draft stuff. It is fun for me to do it. I personally, uh, it's a fun time to be a quarterback, to be a fan of the position. I think that there's a significant amount of talent in this draft. A lot of young guys in the league, a lot of young guys coming up next year that potentially would be in the draft that I'm excited to take a look at. So it's just a fun time to be a fan of the position and to, uh, to share a little bit of what, uh, what I think is going on with the position, but I sincerely appreciate the support from everybody, especially people who support it through multiple mediums. It means a great deal to me. So appreciate you. <laughs> Gold blood 21, all caps coming in hot with the jokes. <laughs> I still get people pissed about that April 1st video. Still. It's hilarious. Uh, usually they get pissed and like write a comment before they finish the video or like in the first 30 seconds or something and then they eventually get back in there. Oh man, we got the legend, Brett Coleman, making it happen live. What's good, sir? Boom, boom. Trying to hold it down in beautiful San Diego. I think you're a SoCal guy. It's nice down here. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know if you can tell the glow here, but we were at the beach today. Tis the season out here. It's kind of the off season, like condensed, truncated off season down here for California high school football. So first day, not doing any high school football, went to the beach, uh, got some waves in, got some boogie boarding in. It's nice down here. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> All good. Let's crush a couple more questions here and then we're on out of here. Running low. Oh, I'm going to butcher this name, so I apologize. Rajay Pavan, do you miss playing in the NFL? Uh, that is a great question. I'll tell you what I miss. I miss the paychecks. Uh, I miss the competition. More than anything else, I miss the competition. Uh, I do not miss the, I don't know, anxiety isn't the right word. It's like the uncertainty, the ambiguity of not knowing like what the hell is going to happen next year. And that's just because I wasn't good enough. I think it'd be a little bit different if I was ever in a more stable situation, but Damn, I miss the competition. Like the best of the best all the time. Every week, every practice, every rep. You can't replicate it. You just can't. It's it's uh and I knew it when I was in it that I was never gonna be able to replicate it, but that's really what I miss the most. But I miss the checks too. Anybody who tells you different is not telling you the truth. <laughs> we're hardly shredding down here, Jason. Uh I don't go very far. We're we're right at the at the uh Coronado Beach, the shores. If you're from the area all good all right let's do one more oh man gold blood this will not be the last question but th i know this is hard then i get it i would be frustrated too uh where do you think big mac daddy jones ends up i honestly don't think about it like that like i am fortunate enough my little space niche uh i don't think about like organizational fit i don't think about who needs what for me, it's just like a blank canvas. If I had the opportunity to build an offense around one of these players, who would it be in what order? So I don't really think of it as like, gosh, if he went to New England, be a perfect fit. I mean, just about any quarterback would be a perfect fit in New England. They're pretty good at winning. And so for me, it's like it's hard to kind of play that like mock draft game. I'm just not good enough at this to, to pretend to do that. And so... I don't have a great answer for you. I think Mac Jones, the thing that I love about Mac Jones is he balled out when he got his shot. Like there's no knock on that. Yeah, you didn't beat out Jalen Hurts and Tua, but when you got your shot, you balled out. And I think that that's really admirable and cool on a number of different levels. My man, John P, boom. Appreciate you becoming a member. All good. Boom. Roberto Snow. John Snow, you know nothing. <laughs> If you were a five-star recruit and could start all over again, knowing what you know, what coach and offense would you want to compete under? Pfft, that's a loaded question. Uh, I would never be close to a five-star recruit. Uh, this is a tough one for me for a few reasons. Walk, I'll walk you through it. Uh, college football is a tough racket 
when you are going into it as a young person and really don't get the uh, financial elements of the game. And I don't mean that. I mean that even at the Division II level. Uh, these coaches are making a lot of money. Now, my, my Division II coaches were not making that much money, but they were making money. And you're not. And you don't have the opportunity to. And all of those coaches are trying to get the better job. Or not all of them. The vast, vast majority of them. So the guy that recruits you or the coach that recruits you might not be there when you leave. Or might you might sign a letter of intent and then they're gone. And they might not let you out. And so for me, uh, I would look for stability in the position. I would just look for someone who's telling me the truth. Who do I feel like the bullshit meter is the lowest on? And I just know that it would be someone I know in the industry. I'm a big fan of the guys that just got hired at Boise. Their former Davis quarterback. Uh, he's a former Davis quarterback, Tim Plow. He's going to be a, he already is a rising star in college football. Uh, I would want to go somewhere with like that. Catch someone who is either on the up in their career or very established that you know is going to be there. I think like, what would be a good example? I'm not a defensive guy, but like Gary Patterson. Like, Someone that you, like, I value that stability. And I think it got reinforced in the league by having to bounce around and move around. But I would want to know that that, or at least have a good feeling that this person's probably going to be there. As opposed to, you know, someone who, you know, potentially is, you know, always looking at the horizon for the better job. And I get it that that's strange. And, you know, who am I to tell someone not to go get a better job? I feel the same way about why players should be able to transfer uh, if they get a better opportunity. But that's just not the way that the game is played right now or yet, uh, even with the one transfer immediately thing. So I would look for to catch a coach on the up that I really, really believed in and trusted and was authentic with me or find someone that I really loved and believed in that was going to be super stable. Hope that makes sense. Boom. George, what are your options on the transfer portal? I've heard negative options in it. Uh, I personally am someone, I've said this many times, I believe that everyone should be able to transfer whenever they want. Just I, I, I shouldn't say that. I believe that students, like normal students, can transfer schools. So they can transfer schools. They don't have to sit out of art class. They don't have to sit out of band. They don't have to sit out of drama. Uh, so if students, athletes, are students first, they should be treated the exact same as students. That's how I feel. Boom. All right, let's get one more here. Lock this sucker down. I'm on to the next. Appreciate you all hanging tight. Oh, man, I'm going to butcher this name. I apologize. Ario Calderon. How important is the athleticism at the quarterback position? I think it's important at every position. Uh, I think it's just been uh, brought to light uh, maybe a little bit more recently about how uh, football has maybe evolved from putting and this probably trickles up in football from the best players maybe a decade ago would have been pushed to play maybe middle linebacker tailback now the best player is playing quarterback and so the athleticism across the landscape of football has elevated i think personally for me uh, as a coach play caller former guy uh, i think it sure as hell makes life easier for everybody when the quarterback is athletic because it can bail you out of so many situations now, it also puts you in some tough situations as far as if you're going to run the quarterback, you're going to run him between the tackles. What does that look like? You're going to run him in the red area. You're going to run him uh, with some gap schemes like power counter, or you're going to run him just zone read on the perimeter. Those are all decisions for coaching staffs. But for me, if, you know, if there was a decision like would you prefer an athletic guy or a non-athletic guy, obviously an athletic guy uh, gives you so many different options, different weapons, different ways to threaten a defense, and it really screws a defense uh, – if you're playing a team that runs the quarterback, and I mean really runs the quarterback, you all, you have to play zero. If you don't play zero, you don't have enough hats in the fit. What I mean is you don't have enough people to cover every gap so that the offense is always going to have a plus one if you play a middle, any type of defense that isn't zero. so And then if you play zero, you got to be able to tackle in space. And so it just creates so much stress on a defense. Uh, but you have to be willing to run the quarterback. It helps to have depth if you're going to do that because it takes so much time to invest in developing that quarterback. But, man, when you run the quarterback, it stresses the defense, and it just is a backbreaker when it's like, you know, third and whatever. Ooh, hold up. Watch this. See if I can do this now. This is going 
uh, on my absolute kind of deep end as far as my capacity on these lives. So we're going to try to switch the screen. Watch this now. Okay. This is from this past weekend. Patrick Henry. A couple of my favorite plays. This is a third and 15. See if this thing works actually. Someone hit me in the chat. Let me know that this thing is working, that you can see me. Third and 15. This is a three by two empty at a two personnel. So two tight ends, three wide receivers. We are going to run quarterback pin and pull to the boundary. So we've got rules as far as who's pinning, who's pulling. But look at the stress it creates on the defense. It's third and 15. And we're just running basically sweep right. So from the back end, you can really see it. So if you're going to run a quarterback, we had a very athletic quarterback this year. He's a great running the ball. But look at the numbers to the right. Like You don't have to be a math genius to realize that, hey, uh, they don't have enough dudes for the gaps on the right. We pin. We seal the edge. Both our tight ends are pinning. That would be even better if the tight end on the far right, the wing, got up to the next level to the pin he's supposed to get. But he runs underneath it, and the quarterback's out the gate. This is third and 15. This is punt return right. So again, just causes a lot of stress on a defense when you're going to do this. Third and 15. I love this. I actually got the suggestion for this formation from my man over at Blitzology. Hooking me up. Mm, this is not running the quarterback. Let's see if I remember what this is. This is split flow inside zone. Oh, this is another one that I love. So zero by four formation here. So the two receivers up top are both on the line of scrimmage. The number two receiver up top is dead, meaning that he can't run downfield. We've got no eligibles to the right. We're running split flow inside zone. It's an amazing backside combination block. Not amazing, just very good block. We were really good up front. Had a lot of guys that really believed in what we were doing. Watch this thing. See if I can draw it up here for us. Actually, this will be totally next level if I can do this during a live. So we go from three by one. I'm calling the plays from the sideline. We do peak tempo. So they look over. We go zero by four. See if we can get the tailback lined up correctly. The block here that's really important is the backside, what I'm used to calling a B block. So a B block to me is just a way that we communicate the backside combination blocks. So we're going to go double team, double team, and then they're going to double team up to a vertical combination linebacker. But this right tackle really has the most important job. He's going to blow vertical double team, come off to the linebacker. We're going to get this slice action from the tight end. And it's just a, it's basically me telling the tailback, hey, we should have a cutback. So right here, watch that right tackle. He gets into him. Double team, and then he comes off. <laughs> and we've got a great offensive line coach. But I'm telling you, you don't see a whole lot of blocks like this at the high school level. And we also we have a very good tailback as well. We led the section in yards per game. But this is early on. We take a 10 nothing lead. They come back and score 22 unanswered, and we come back and win by one. But really nice running the ball. So lots of fun with that. This is a big pick, but man, I tell you what, it worked. Oh no, come on back. Now I'm going to have to get rid of all my GIFs. Boom. So, pretty excited that worked. <laughs> Would never have guessed. I'm glad I set it up beforehand in case somebody mentioned it. Uh, man, we got 200 hanging out. Uh, I certainly do appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out making this thing happen again we're going to plan on doing a live before the draft not before the draft like the evening of the draft i'll do another live it will not be next monday night uh, then we will do a, a live post draft talk about some quarterbacks and uh hopefully some cool storylines be excited for where guys end up probably be some movement in the draft as well but again thank you so much for the support uh sincerely appreciate you supporting the channel across multiple mediums it means a lot to me thanks again have a good night i'll see you on the other side